Good morning, everyone is joining us. I'm just gonna give it a minute here while everyone's getting connected from the waiting room. We will get started here in just a moment. Looks like there's a couple still popping in. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get to it. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us here. This is our third Fresno City College campus training on Adobe Sign. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Megan Elam. I'm the executive assistant for Don Lopez, our vice president of instruction. Presenting with me this morning, we have Alex Wrigley. He is our Adobe Sign customer uh, development coordinator. And um, we also have Susie Nitchell, our professional development coordinator, who's gonna be assisting us with monitoring the Q&A feature. Um, moving forward, if you do have questions as we go through the presentation, please utilize the Q&A function and we will get those answered for you. We also have our interpreters with us this morning, Chelsea and Ryan. For today's training, we are gonna focus on the process of sending out and managing a form utilizing the Adobe website portal. Um, and we're gonna be utilizing the magic form. And I'm gonna go ahead and go turn it over to Alex, who's gonna tell us a little bit more about what Adobe is and we will get going here. All right, thank you, Megan, for the intro. For, uh, folks, good morning, Alex Wrigley here. I'm your Sign Customer Success Manager. Uh, before I jump into what Adobe Sign is, uh, I had a cool little story I wanted to share. So last night, as I was getting ready uh, for my day today, I was looking at my phone and uh, was reminded that we had our training this morning. Um, and just as I was doing that, I was watching uh, The Simpsons on Fox and it, it moved to the next show and it was uh, it's an animated show called The Great North. And uh, there was a character in there who was talking about her life back in Fresno and how she got a great start with the education she got at Fresno City College. So it was such a, such a mind uh, trip to see that uh, while I was uh, thinking about you guys today. So I just wanted to share that. Um, but a little bit about Adobe Sign. Uh, Adobe Sign is a web tool that allows folks to get documents signed anywhere, anytime by anybody. And so it's a lot uh, like using email. Uh, I think it's pretty intuitive to use if you feel comfortable, you know, setting up an email, adding an attachment and sending it out to a few folks. Uh, I think you'll be right at home with Adobe Sign. Uh, so next, I'm going to hand it back to Megan, who's going to show you how to get logged in uh, through your guys' process. Thank you, Alex. So I am going to go ahead and turn on my screen share. And the very first thing that you're going to want to do in order to get to the Adobe Sign website is you're going to want to navigate to the Fresno City College uh, website. Once you're on the Fresno City College website, you're going to want to go to the faculty and staff page. On the faculty and staff page, you're going to want to scroll down until you find the quick links area. On here, we went ahead and added in a shortcut to the Adobe Sign website. So if you look under common, you're going to see right here, there is a link that says Adobe Sign. Once you click into this link, um, that's going to take you to the website, and I'm going to go ahead and do that and show you how to sign in. So once you click that link, it's going to open up a second web page. On this web page, in the upper right-hand corner, you're going to want to click Sign In. Once you do, that's going to jump you to the Sign In page. From here, you're going to want to put in your Fresno City College email address. Um, for the majority of us, that's going to be first name dot last name at fresnocitycollege.edu. Um, some of you might have an SCCD email or you might have um, a different college email. It's going to be your main email address that you use for the college. So that's the email account that you're going to want to put in there. After that, once you click into the password field, it's going to jump you to our single sign in. Um, you don't have to input a password at this page. As soon as you click into that field, you're going to see a little um, load sign that says, please wait, and it'll jump you back to our sign in. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that now. 
by simply single clicking into the password field. You see that please wait that comes up and then it's gonna jump you to the single sign in page. Once you're on this page, it's the standard uh, sign in that we use all the time. So it's gonna be your initial and then the three digit number and your normal password. And then you wanna make sure you have the employee button selected and then log in. At that point, and it does take a second to load, you're gonna be on the Adobe Sign home screen. And from here, I am gonna go ahead and turn it back to Alex and he's gonna walk us through how to navigate uh, moving forward from here. Hey Megan, before you do that, would okay. you actually just uh, quickly screen share uh, for our guests? The, the one thing I wanted to point out uh, here on the welcome screen is that some of you are probably still working with the classic experience. Megan, will you clock, uh, yeah, click the toggle just so folks see. All right. So folks, if any of you are uh, looking at this screen when you're logged into Adobe Sign, I just want to point out that this is the classic experience. Um, we've actually updated the user interface. And so, yeah, Megan, if you click that one more time, that'll bring you to the more modern uh, refreshed look. Eventually, all sign users will be on this interface. So I just wanted to kind of point out the differences. Um, this is just a little cleaner and uh, more intuitive. And eventually, again, you guys will all be using that. So uh, just take note of that. All right. Thank you, Megan. I will jump in and begin my screen share. Let me jump in here. All right. So ladies and gents and folks, welcome to the Adobe Sign uh, home screen. Uh, we are going to take a quick tour and review all the features and functions and quick access here. Uh, starting from the upper left hand corner here, we'll have tabs for both uh, for the home screen here, the send page, our manage page where we manage all of our agreements and our templates and, and other assets. There's a reports tab uh, where you guys can go run usage around uh, all the activity in your Adobe Sign account. And then lastly, for admins and group admins, uh, they'll have an extra tab here that says account or uh, group. So I'm, a group, I'm an account admin here in uh, my demo account, so that's why we see this one. So as we move to the right, uh, here at the top, we'll see that we have some numbers. Uh, I have nine workflows in progress. And so if I click on this link here, it's going to bring me over to the manage tab uh, and open up my in progress folder. Same here with waiting for you. The Adobe Sign system is letting me know that I have 11 workflows that I'm participating in and need me to take action. So if I click on that, it's also going to bring me to the manage tab into my waiting for you folder. And then lastly, we have events and alerts. I'm going to click on this. And this brings up a list of uh, recent activity in my account. Uh, I can see that an email uh, I sent out to Bob's email uh, bounced. And so the system is letting me know that it could not be delivered. Below that, I see that a, a web form I created was viewed by um, uh, a signer. And, and so on. So that is recent notifications. Again, if we head back home using the home tab, uh, we'll have these quick links up here. All right, as we move to the center of the screen, uh, the big blue button right here that says request signatures, I'm gonna click on that. That's gonna bring us to our send tab or our send setup page. And from here, we can start the business of creating a workflow and sending out a document for signature. So let's start that. I'm actually going to include Megan here in a demo send. Adobe Sign remembers that I previously sent Megan uh, a request for signature in a previous demo. So uh, it is offering up a suggestion for her email address. Uh, to the left of her email address here, we'll see a drop down and a pen icon. I'm gonna click on that. And now I'm presented with different roles that participants in your workflow can take on. Uh, you know, not everybody who participates and interacts with the document workflow is going to necessarily have to sign. We may have folks who need to approve 
we, need, we may have folks who simply need to accept, uh, be certified recipients, fill out the form, and or even delegate uh, to other recipients. And so uh, again, you know, just take note of that. It's here in the drop down to the left of the email address. Depending on what uh, your account admin set up for you, you may not have all of these, but uh, you should have a few. All right. And as I scroll to the right here, I'm going to point out that we have uh, the ability to add a private message. I want to say hi, Megan. Sign. Save that. And let's just say I had additional folks in the workflow here. I have Jan as my second recipient. I could also set up Jan with her own private message and instructions, and that would not be visible to Megan. Um, as I come back, I'm going to show you quickly that we have some different authentication options uh, within Adobe Sign. And authentication options are how we validate the user's identity that we're sending this to. By default, um, most organizations and most of my customers in higher ed are very comfortable with email, especially because you guys use email behind single sign on. And so we can feel pretty confident that if we send, if I send Megan uh, a request to sign that I know that it's Megan who is actually going to be opening up her inbox and signing that form. But we do have some additional options here. I won't go any deeper than that, but all right. So we can continue to add recipients if there are folks you know, that need to sign um, on this form and on our magic form that we're gonna pull up here. And I can just go ahead and add Tom in here and so on. And we can, we can keep adding folks as is necessary for uh, this particular workflow. Uh, I'm gonna keep it simple for the demo and just leave it to Megan, a single recipient. As I move on and scroll down, we'll see here the show CC option. And if we add a CC, we can add Tom back into here. Um, what happens for folks who are CC'd is they're going to receive a completed document at the end of the workflow. They're not gonna participate in any way. Um, they're not gonna be you know, notified of anything happening in the workflow. They're simply going to be uh, provided a completed copy. So just in case there's another team or department that needs to you know, take possession of that document to continue to process it, uh, but doesn't need to participate in the workflow, this is where you're gonna wanna add them here in the CC. I'll close that out. And as I scroll down, we'll see we have our uh, message. This is basically the subject line here. And we can populate a message that goes out in the please sign email um, for all the folks in the in the workflow. And so, as I mentioned earlier, if you're feeling comfortable with setting up, you know, an email, it's just as simple as, you know, adding some email addresses of our recipients. Uh, we can add some messages, you know, either here um, in the public message or privately. We need to attach a form. And so I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna hit add files and I'm gonna select the magic form that I have uploaded to my laptop, click that. I now see here under files that the magic form is attached. I could continue to add more attachments here and they would be um, added into this workflow. I could drag and drop or again hit the add files. Once I added that, the file name actually populated here as the subject line. And so I can say, please sign the magic 20. 10, 18, 16 form. And this is gonna go out to everybody. And then also populates the, the body of uh, the email here. All right, moving over to the right, we have some options here. We can set a completion deadline. If I set that to two days and I send it right now, at 11, 14 a.m. on March 31st, the agreement will expire and the link to sign the form uh, will be uh, rendered ineffective. You won't be able to access that form anymore. If I hit set reminder, I can set a reminder that goes out to all participants uh, at these frequencies. All right, I'm gonna pause here. And I did wanna point out if you ever see a question mark 
in the Adobe Sign Tool, if you click on that, it's going to give you some additional information about the features or options uh, that um, are on the page that you're interacting with. So we click that and we see some additional information around completion deadlines, reminders, and recipient language. So quick little tip. All right. Our preview and add signature fields uh, option is checked by default. And if I hit next, that's going to bring us into the authoring environment, which is a drag and drop interface for adding fields onto our form. I do want to point out that this form already had fields on it. And so Adobe Sign does recognize that. But we're still going to need to come in here and add a signature field for Megan. And so Megan, I was curious, uh, where would we want to add your signature field uh, just as a sig single signature? Um, let's go ahead and just do it in the initiated by selection. Right yes. Okay. Great. So I'm going to highlight this one and hit delete. And then over here in the far right hand column, I'm going to be presented with different field types available in Adobe Sign. And so I'm going to navigate down to the signature fields, grab the signature, and just drag and drop right onto my form. I'm going to grab the corner and then size it up. And boom, now it's sized appropriately for the real estate available on the form. And uh, I feel good to go. I do want to add a date field for Megan. So I'm going to delete this one and actually grab one from additional signer information fields. Here's the date field. Size that up, move it there. Looking good. All right. While we're here, I do want to point out um, some additional fields available in Adobe Sign. If I go to data fields, I'll see that I have text input fields, drop downs, check boxes, radio buttons, and even images. And so there's lots of fields that uh, you can put on the form so that your signers or your recipients can add appropriate information. I'm going to grab this drop down and bring it on over here. Size that up a little bit. I'm going to double click into it. And that brings up our customization menu. And as I scroll down in the customization menu, I can see that the, um, the field is actually assigned to Megan, but I could assign it to myself as a pre-filled field, or I could leave it open to anyone. So you'll want to be, uh, you know, specific about fields when you drag them onto the form and who should be filling them out. So I'm going to assign this one to Megan. I'm going to make it a required field so that she has to decide between uh, the options that we specify here. I'm just going to say, hey, what's today's weather like out in Fresno? Is it sunny, foggy, other? And then I can even come and set a default value. I know it's sunny in your guys' neck of the woods. So I'll just leave it there. I can add a tooltip. And so if I hit today's weather as a tooltip, that means when Megan clicks into this field or hovers over, over it, um, this tooltip will be displayed, today's weather. And that's going to guide your signer as to what information is being asked for. All right. There's a lot more customizations available, but I'm going to leave it at that for our drop down. Oh, I also want to say that if you guys are adding fields, it may be helpful to give them good names. So for this drop down, I'm going to call it weather so that when I run a report against this form, if I have lots of them, I can see that, oh, you know, this particular field is a weather field instead of, you know, drop down one or drop down five, right? It helps us understand reports better if we run those. Okay. As I scroll down further, I'm going to look at more fields. Um, I think in higher ed, the file attachment field is a cool one. Um, oftentimes we're asking students or faculty to add additional files to support maybe the form in, you know, that we're signing. So maybe we want to ask the student for uh, an additional transcript or, you know, proof of grades or of some sort. This is a, an easy way to capture that is using the file attachment field here in more fields. You can even add a hyperlink 
And then, you know, we can have somebody click on that hyperlink and it takes them to another site if you want them to review some additional information. All right, I think we're good there. I'm gonna leave it as is. And I'm gonna pause and take a look if there's any questions so far about the authoring environment or fields while we're on this page. Alex, I do have a couple questions that we've received. Okay, fire away. Um, so one of them is from Shirley and this one um, I can go ahead and answer. Okay. Shirley is asking if the signature that, um, if that's the signature that adds the official signature with the date. So the signature box that Alex dragged over, that does give an official signature. Um, and sending out a document this way will generate the audit page. Um, but if you want a date to display on the document, you do need to drag over the date field as well. So the signature is located under signature fields and the date is located under signer info fields. As you can see, Alex is highlighting those on the screen. Yeah. We do have another field type, Megan, thanks for answering that. Uh, it's called a signature block. Um, and we have some that are have a bit of a different format where uh, you can capture both the signature as well as email. And there's another style that also incorporates the date, but that has to be enabled through settings. And so, you know, if that's necessary for your department, um, you know, I can help you guys get set up on that. Yeah, to Megan's point, the easiest way is just to grab signature field and then a date field, drag that over. Any other questions? We did um, also, I got a, a question separately um, that was referring to the sizing of the fields themselves. Yes. Um, and if the fields do expand um, or if we need to modify the size upon adding the, adding the field in as you just displayed. Yeah, you're going to want to size it up for the, you know, the available real estate on the form, uh, because these fields do not dynamically adjust, you know, if you continue to add data into them, um, they stay static based on um, how you size it when you add it. So you'll need to make sure you do that. All right. Thank you. And then one other question I got separately um, was on how you deleted the signature field that was generated on the form and yes. then added in another signature. And um, I did just want to clarify if you keep if you overlap a signature field, um, like if Alex hadn't deleted that one that generated on the form, um, that does cause issues later on with which field displays. So you want to try not to overlap the fields. It's a good point. Um, and then I asked for clarification on, or I was asked, sorry, for clarification on how you deleted the field that was there. Yep, good question. Um, I simply click on the field. I see that I get a, it, it's outlined now, meaning that I'm highlighting this one. And all I did was hit delete. And that removes it, same here. Perfect. And then we got one additional question from Shirley, who is asking, what is the stamp field? on the side under signature fields? Um, in some organizations, uh, there are signers who use a, an official stamp. I see this a lot in uh, state and local government. Um, and, and so they, or in, in other countries as well. So they use a stamp in lieu of a signature. Perfect. Well, That's, that was all of the questions that we had on currently. Great. All right. So it looks like we are ready to send our magic form out. Um, I did want to point out, though, that, you know, based on the previous send page that we were on, we only had Megan as a recipient. But if there were additional signers here, uh, we would simply, and we wanted to add fields for them, I would simply come up here to the recipients drop down and then select the correct recipient. As an example, I can select myself, student services, and, um, and add some fields that I need to fill out. I can't do that now because I didn't actually add myself in on the send page as a participant. Uh, however, if I did, then I would be able to access additional fields and then assign them to myself. So 
as if you're building out a workflow, you know, with multiple recipients, this is how you uh, move from uh, recipient to recipient. All right, now I'm ready to hit send. This is now gonna be heading over to Megan. I get confirmation as the initiator that the magic form has been sent successfully. I see that I set reminders for every day and uh, I'll be notified in one day um, if no one has taken any action on this. And then from here, I can send an, another document. I can go and hit, hit, go ahead and hit manage this agreement and or modify the agreement if I need to make some adjustments to fields on the form. So I'm gonna pause here and hand it over to Megan who will step us through the signing experience. Thank you, Alex. So I do wanna go ahead and share what this looks like from our email perspective. So what you're seeing right now is my inbox. So you can see that I got an email here and it's displaying as student services, which is um, on the demo account that Alex is using. That is what he has his name selected as. So if I were sending a document, it would display right here as Megan Elam. And then you're gonna notice the email address it comes from is adobesign at adobesign.com. You might also see something that says echo sign. Um, most of them will display like this where they're not really showing the pictures. You can simply click on that to download the pictures if you wanna see the logos. Um, and you can see this is the custom one that Alex has set up. And then it's gonna prompt you to, let me turn off my dark settings, sorry about that. Um, you're gonna see that you've received the, the form requesting your signature and right here, it's gonna prompt you to review and sign. And then you can see the private message that was sent. Um, so I would be the only person that sees this private message. And then this is the message up here that is displayed for everyone. Once I click review and sign, that's gonna take me into a web page. It takes a second to load sometimes. It's gonna prepare my document. And then you're gonna see something that looks like this. Um, Alex, before we get started with the signing process, did you wanna review the options? Yes, thank you. So folks, uh, as a signer, uh, you, you, know, you have additional options available in the upper left-hand corner when you're on the signing screen. And so you have the option to read the agreement. Uh, if you're not the correct signing authority, you can hit the delegate signing to another and that will uh, bring up uh, the ability for you to send it to someone else. You can decline to sign and also provide, you know, a, a reason for your the declining of the signing. Um, in some cases, you may need to sign it with a wet signature, go old school. So uh, you can print and then sign the form, uh, you know, with a wet signature and then scan and upload it back into the Adobe Sign workflow here. And then we'll continue on. And if you need to clear out all the document data, you can clear that. Uh, there's links then below that for a history of the workflow, kind of an audit trail. And then lastly, you can download the PDF if you need it. And so those are additional options uh, as a signer available to you. Thank you, Alex. You'll also see up here on the right, um, you'll have the little comment feature. So this message does display whenever you first open the form and then it'll go away. If you need to bring that up, you just sing, uh, single click on it and you can view the message that was left for you. You'll also see up here, it's gonna say next required field. So if I were to click start right here where it's prompting me, it's gonna take me through every single field that is optionable for me to sign or for me to fill out. If I go to next required field, that's going to jump me only to the parts that are assigned to me. So the only ones that I am mandated to fill out. And you're going to see that those are also marked by this little red asterisk in the upper right hand corner. So right now, these two fields are the only one that I would be responsible for doing. Um, the rest of these were left optionable. So at this point, if I click into the field to sign, I have my signature saved in Adobe. If you don't, once you click into that field, this little pop-up will generate. And from here, you're able to either type your name 
you're able to use your mouse and draw your name. You can upload an image, which is what I did for my signature. Um, I simply took a picture of it, cropped it, and uploaded it on Adobe and had Adobe save it. Or you can use your mobile device. So you can input your cell phone number. You're going to get a message from Adobe, and you'd be able to draw your signature straight through your phone. It's a very quick and easy process. Um, so you do have quite a few options to generate your signature in those fields if you don't have one saved in Adobe. Did I cover all of that okay, Alex? Do you want to add anything there? No, solid. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and use my signature here and hit apply. And then I'm going to go into this next field here. And you can see I do have the drop down with those different choices that Alex displayed for us earlier. Um, so I am going to go ahead and go sunny because it is very sunny here today. Um, and you can see the attach file is optional. So I'm not required to attach a document at this point. Um, and Alex, before I move any further, I did get a question on the attach file um, option. Yes. So utilizing this, are we able to attach multiple files or only one file? Only one file per attachment field. Um, so if you needed more, you'd need to just add more attachment file fields. You know. Thank you. All righty. Did we want to cover anything else on here, Alex, before I finish it out? No, looks good. Go ahead and hit the final step. Um, so I do just want to clarify at this point, while well, yes, my signature is here, if I were to close this out, it is not done. It is not completed. In order to actually submit your signature, you do have to click this, this blue button here on the bottom of the screen that says click to sign. If you do not click this button, you have not signed your document. So once you click that, you're going to notice it's going to process your document. And then you're going to get this confirmation sheet that says that you, you finished signing it. All parties are going to be notified via email. So right now it says this because I was the only party to sign. If there were multiple signers, it would say something along the lines of um, you finished signing, it has been sent to the next uh, signer on the account, and once it's finished, you'll, you'll be notified. You will still get the option to download a copy of what you just signed. And then before I stop screen sharing, I just want to show once you finish signing your end, you will get a signature uh, confirmation from Adobe that says that you've signed it, and you'll have the PDF copy here. If there are multiple signers, the initiator of the document will get the notification um, as each signer signs. Um, and then upon completion of the document, all parties involved and all of those CC'd get those notification emails. All right, thanks, Megan. All right, folks, stepping back into the role of the sender or the initiator, um, I'm now going to hit the home tab. And let's say that I want to learn more information about that workflow I just sent out that Megan just signed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and navigate to the manage tab, click on that. And now I'm presented with all of my assets in Adobe Sign. So here I'm going to find all of my forms, um, those that are in progress, waiting for me, forms that have been completed, canceled, expired, in draft status, et cetera. And then below that, we'll, you'll see there's templates, web forms, and mega sign. Now, today's scope isn't to cover those items, but uh, again, any assets, uh, that you have in Adobe Sign will be here on the Manage tab. So I saw that Megan signed that. And actually, if I hit the Home tab again, I'm going to I want to go over to Events and Alerts, click on that. And I'll see that at the top of my events notifications is that uh, the magic form was signed by Megan today at 1132. If I click on that, It's going to show me the form. So quick access to it. 
Um, but if I wanted to uh, navigate to it manually, I would go to manage. I would go to my completed folder. And right at the top here, I'll see the magic form. If I click on that to highlight it, I'll be presented with some additional options and actions and data around this workflow. We'll see that the workflow was created today at 1115. The status shows is signed. Um, uh, the group that I sent it from is the default group. We'll be turning on users in multiple groups uh, it, here in summer. So that's what that is referring to. So you, a member could be both in like HR or procurement or, you know, uh, admissions and, you know, um, counseling groups, et cetera. Uh, beyond that, we'll see that we have additional actions. We can open the agreement, I can download it, and save it locally. I can take a look at the audit report. Um, I can download form field data. So there was a lot of fields on that magic form. And if I needed to uh, get those in a CSV, I can just click on download form field data. I can also hide this agreement from my view. If I'm done you know, interacting with the form and I wanna clean up my completed folder, I would hit hide agreement. I expand this, um, I have the ability to share the form, to click on that. I can let other folks view and access it. I can set up a reminder. However, the, the agreement's been completed, so I don't have the option to, but if this thing was still in progress, uh, I could add that reminder here manually. I can add notes uh, around this particular document that I can access only from my view only. And then I can download individual files. Let's say Megan had actually attached a transcript in the file attachment field. We would see that there would be two files here and then I can download them individually. So these are some options here in the completed folder. As I scroll further down, I can take a look at recipients in the workflow and then kind of a high level uh, audit trail of everything that happened with this form. It'll show when I created it, when I sent it out, uh, when it was viewed by Megan, and then ultimately when she e-signed it. If I head on over to my in progress folder. I'll, uh, let's see, I can just click on this one here. That's a good example. Uh, I see in the far right hand column that I have an option to edit an expiration date. And so I can go ahead and choose the 31st, save that. We now have an updated expiration date. My status shows out for signature. Here's my message to my recipient. Again, we have some additional options here in uh, the actions menu. If I hit modify agreement, I can come back to the send page and I get some limited options. Uh, as an example, I can add an additional file here if I needed to uh, add one. I could also step back into the authoring environment. Nope. We had an update and so I'm not allowed to do that on this one. <laughs> I'm locked out, but that's how you could go in and modify an agreement that's still out in progress. Let's say you had to add some additional fields. Um, you could do that by accessing this. All right. Lastly, Alex, yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask a clarification question on the modify agreement. Yes. So if we understood it correctly, if the first signer hasn't done anything on the document yet, then we're still able to modify. Is that correct? That is correct. If at any time any participants have interacted with the agreement, um, the uh, it gets locked down for security purposes. And that's because we do not want the terms of the agreement to change. Right, so if recipient one, signer one, agrees to all the information on that form, um, you know, if you're able to go in and you know, alter fields, then that would negate the validity of that form from a legal standpoint. 
So we lock it down. Um, but if no one has taken any action on it yet, then you can go in and change it and add fields or you know uh, remove fields as necessary because um, it's it's still it's uh, it's still a legally binding agreement in that sense. Like no one is, has agreed yet to the terms on there. So good. Thank clear. you. Let's see. Yeah. Um, um, we did have another uh, two other questions. If that is all right, if we go ahead and address those now. Sure. So um, we are being asked why sometimes is there a lag between when someone has signed and sent the document and we receive the message in our inbox? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I can't really speak to that because there's a lot of different systems involved, right? Uh, there is, there's the Adobe sign, you know, infrastructure, but also there's the customers, uh, in, you know, infrastructure for email and, um, you know, security protocols. So there's lots of areas where a an acknowledgement email or a, a email notification can get delayed. And so it's not necessarily on the sign side. Thank you, that makes sense. It could also be internet factors. There's there's a yeah. bunch of different reasons for, for something like that to have a delay. Exactly. We're also being asked um, if down the road in uh, as a document is being routed, if an error is discovered the process, can you clarify, would the process then have to start all over? That is correct. Yes. Yeah, and that kind of goes back to my previous point about locking down the agreement once people have interacted with it. Um, if there is an error, there's no way for the workflow to go backwards to have it fixed. It would ha simply have to be canceled out um, and as an example, I can <laughs> here on this uh, on this particular workflow that we're looking at, if there was a recipient who found an error, um, they would have to notify the initiator or that recipient could simply decline to sign and that would terminate the transaction. But I can go, I can cancel it myself as the initiator. Um, I'll just say there was an error. I can notify all recipients via email and then cancel that. And then I can navigate over to my canceled folder and um, that will display at the top. Here it is, that student LOA. Any additional questions, Megan? Um, we do have another question, but I'll need to address it once we get to the um, back to the completed field. Okay. Great. Um, I did want to take a moment to point out upload a signed document. Uh, there is the ability for a um, for an initiator to upload a signed for a, a, a signed wet version or wet signature option. So, if we send the workflow electronically, but someone actually prints it out and signs it, we can take that print it out version, scan it, and then upload it back into the Adobe Sign workflow. And we can use that uh, this option here to do that. And then this will be the um, agreement that's used or the document that's used uh, for this workflow. All right. As I scroll down, since we're still in the in progress folder, um, I, in this particular workflow, I have three recipients. And we can see that uh, these two folks have green check marks. That means they've already participated. And then lastly here, uh, we have the counselor at LTCC. Uh, they have, they viewed the agreement, but they have not yet signed it. So let's just say that uh, that user um, or that recipient is out on vacation. I can come in here and using um, this option to replace a recipient or add an alternate recipient, we can add folks who can take action on behalf of that original recipient. So I could replace them all together with somebody else who can sign, or I can add someone else in, maybe uh, this person's manager who can sign uh, for this counselor. So that's available here in the in progress folder when you have multiple recipients. 
And I think that pretty much covers everything I want to cover for um, kind of managing assets. Sign. Megan? Alec, could we re, um, recover the share option? Um, I asked for a clear, or I was asked for a clarification. If we forget to CC someone on the initial send, yeah, it would bet. be the share button. Could you cover that if you don't mind? Sure. I'm going to head back over to the completed folder here. Um, I'll just look at this same magic form that we just signed together, and I'll expand the actions options. I'll click share, and then I can send this to Megan. And it's not going to auto populate with her, but um, I can send it to myself. Oops, it looks like I already added one. And then I can say, uh, forgot to CC you. <laughs> and then we can share this. There we go. Oh, sorry. Let me try that again. I'm already party to this agreement because I'm the initiator. This is a, let me clear this again. Let's try this. Ah. Clear that one out. Add them in there. All right. And that's how you share an agreement with another user. And does utilizing that method um, send them the audit form as well? That's a good question. I don't know. Uh, let me pause and take a look in my inbox and let me know. Yeah. And while you're paused, um, I did just want to address another question I had received. Um, so for example, if an assistant were to send a magic form to their dean and their dean signed it, and then at that point, that completed form with that audit form needs to be sent to an executive assistant to move the routing for the magic further on. Right here in your completed section, you can see since Alex has this magic one that we just did open, you have the options right there on the right to download the audit report as well as download the PDF. So you would need to send both of those files to the executive assistant um, in order for them to move it forward um, with the proper audit reports attached to it. All right. So uh, the audit trail was not sent uh, to me, but I think that's because I have a setting that does not um, automatically attach audit trails uh, to signed agreements. And so that's actually just an account setting. Um, but yeah, if you guys have that enabled, then it would be bundled with the actual document. So while we're on the looking at this audit report here, I, I just want to point out some, some highlights uh, this is the official audit report that is uh, captured with every single work completed workflow. And it shows the full audit trail of that document, when it was created and by whom. Um, it gives you date and timestamp, as well as IP address of that user. Um, this, this is really the document that makes electronic signatures legally enforceable in court. Uh, you know, again, it shows uh, the intent of our recipients to sign. Um, Megan, only Megan has access to her inbox and, you know, we have date and timestamp and we show we have an IP address, you know, and that probably corresponds to Megan's, you know, workstation. And so all this makes it really easy to, you know, to prove in court that, hey, this is a valid and legally binding signature if ever challenged. And so that is the audit trail. I'm going to step back into Adobe Sign. Megan, any additional questions? That covers all the currently open ones. OK. I'm going to take a look, see if we have anything I haven't quite covered yet in our agenda. Uh, waiting for you. Again, um, if I'm a participant in a workflow, Adobe Sign is going to let me know here on the Manage tab in my Waiting for You folder. Uh, right now, it's saying that it's waiting for me to sign. So if I click View and Sign, it's going to take me through the signing ceremony that Megan uh, ushered us through earlier. I hit Start. It's Alex, asking, I'm yes. not sure if it's just my view, but I'm still only seeing the completed screen. Oh. Um, hold on, let me back out of here. 
Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I think I'm still on paused. Let me step you through that one more time, folks. All right. Megan, are, are you seeing my screen now? Yes, now it looks correct. All right. So again, heading back to the Manage tab, waiting for you folder. I'm going to click on this student leave of absence workflow that I'm a participant to or a party to. And I have the blue button here, sign. Same here, view and sign. I'm going to go ahead and click view and sign. And that brings us into the signing page. I have a message from our initiator. I'll click start and ask me to sign. And I'll make sure I fully execute by clicking the click to sign blue button. And now <laughs> I'm redirected to the Monterey Bay Kelp Forest Camp. I set up a redirect uh, for this particular workflow. And so uh, that's, I'm pointed at that. But let me step back into my Adobe Sign account <laughs> in the Manage tab. Go back to Waiting for You. And that student leave of absence is no longer here in Waiting for You. It's going to be here in my completed. Give me one second. Uh, oh, you know what? I think that one is, uh, it has additional participants. So it's still in progress. There it is. And so I always scratch my head where when things don't end up where I expect them to end up. It's because uh, we had two participants on this leave of absence form. So I was the first one and now it can carry on in its way. And so it's still in progress. Megan, any additional questions? Not currently, thank you. Okay. Um, draft folder, uh, if you guys are starting up a workflow and you get distracted or have to navigate away, you'll see that workflow in your draft folder. I can come back into here and resume this grade uh, review petition form. And that's just gonna simply, you know, bring me back to the send setup. And then I can go ahead and hit next, come back into the authoring environment. This is one we reviewed last week. Since we're here, I did want to point out um, an additional data field. I want to point out the text input field. The text input field is the workhorse of all of our data fields in Adobe Sign. It's the one that can really be customized to anything. Um, so if I double click in, I get the customization field menu and you know I can give this field any name I need to. I can assign it to you know, the correct participants. I can select what type of field type it is. Um, I can make it required. I can mask field data. This is, a, this is an important one. I'm sure you guys are gonna be working with sensitive data. Let's say a social security number as an example. We'll wanna mask that from people's view. Only folks who are you know, authorized to interact with you know, people's personal information like that should have access. So we'll wanna make sure that even if that PDF gets out into public, uh, people can't simply you know, look at that data on that field. So we'll mask it. And then only folks who can extract form field data will be able to do so. Let's say it is a social security number um, and we want to create a social security field. I'm going to add a tooltip. I can also add a validation. A validation um, is a way to get a specific type of data. And so if I add a US social security validation, that means when somebody tries to fill this field out, they won't be able to use letters or symbols. They'll only be able to add in digits and the correct number of digits. So I believe that's nine for a US social security number. And so again, social security, now we've entitled this specific field. And so that is the text input field. Alex, if you wouldn't mind opening that that field back up. Yeah. I did just want to point out um, quite a few of our forms do have larger text input boxes. Um, for example, where comments are needed to be put in, um, 
this one in particular is a grade review petition. So if a instructor has their text box where they need to explain, you know, what the issue was and what the proper grade would be, or if a student needs to, you know, add in their, their, their information, if it is a larger text box, you want to make sure that you have multi-line data entry selected. Um, that way you don't have the text, it doesn't stay single lined and run off the page. This way it will multi-line and be able to utilize that full space. Thank you, Megan. And then we did also just get a question if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. So before sending a document for its initial signature, um, we've heard that we can place an initial here field. So for example, if someone needs to proof the budget info for accuracy before the supervisor signs it in sections of a document, could you show how to do this if that is doable? Yes, um, so we want to add in uh, an approver step in our workflow. So let me, let me step out of here. I'm going to go home. And I'll set up send. I can, I can start here at the send tab. And so let's say that I want to add myself. I can click the add me button here or type in myself and then it adds me into the workflow. So I'll be step one here. And I don't need to sign the form. I simply need to uh, approve anything that goes out um, before it gets to our first signer, Megan. Okay. Likewise, if um, I wanted to put myself behind Megan so that she signs first, adds an information into the form, and then it comes to me for review, um, I can, as an approver, um, I'll be able to look at all of the data in the, uh, on the form, and then I can decide you know, to approve it or not approve it. And that would terminate the, the workflow if I decided not to approve it. So um, yeah, there's different ways to add a kind of reviewer step, if you will. Good questions. Got a few minutes here, folks. Liking the engagement. Any more questions? All right. Well, folks, thank you for your time and attention. Uh, appreciate being here. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys uh, engage with the Adobe Sign tool. Um, oh, I, you know what? There's one last thing I did want to point out, folks. Let me let me do a quick screen share. I always forget to do this up front. But whenever you're in Adobe Sign, and let me bring up Adobe Sign here. Whenever you're in the Adobe Sign tool and you want to learn how to do something, in the upper right-hand corner by the question mark, you'll have a drop down that gives you access to the user guide, tutorials, and our release notes for the latest stuff that we've released. Um, you probably won't see contact support. That's, I think it's removed from your account. But uh, tutorials, if you click on that, will open up a new tab in your browser and will give you video tutorials for all the bells and whistles found in Adobe Sign. So right here, we can click send documents for signature or set up a routing order for signing, um, delegation, et cetera. So uh, we have beginner and more experienced uh, tutorials. So a great tool, again, when you're in the Adobe Sign tool, upper right-hand corner, don't forget that one. Megan, back over to you. Perfect, thank you, Alex. So um, we are at time for today. I just wanted to, again, say thank you for everyone who was able to join in. Thank you, Alex. Thank you to our interpreters and Susie for helping out get everything set up for us. Um, these all have been posted on the Professional Development YouTube channel, and this one will be up soon once editing is complete. That link has been posted in the chat for you. Um, and yeah, if you have any other questions, feel free to send me an email and we'll get those taken care of. Thank you, everyone. Thanks all. Take care.